us. Let's spell it out together. G R E E N. Yay! Now, let's see if we can think of a way to use it in a sentence. Hmm. Let me think. Think, think, think. Oh, I know. We should eat our. Gr we should remember to eat our green vegetables to help us grow up big and strong. Alright kids, and today's stability derivative of the day is XW. It's the axial force due to the normal velocity. I wonder what it looks like. Hmm, does it look like this? No. Does it look like this? No. no. You're right kids. It actually looks like this. And the equation for XW is... But how do we get there? Alright, well we start off with xw being the partial derivative of x compared to w. Wow, that's great, but where does x come from? Hmm. I think red knows. Well, we start off with the x-force equation first, which is just l sine theta minus d cosine theta plus tau. Why don't we call x an equation that uses 1 half rho v squared s times cl sine theta minus cd cosine theta plus tau. Oh look, it's partial derivative man! <laughs> Thanks, partial derivative man. Now we're left with one half rho v squared s, and then we take the partial derivative of the lift coefficient, and we get that first term in parentheses. Then we subtract the partial derivative of the coefficient of drag, and then we have d tau over dw. Wait, Daniel. Aren't we making small angle assumptions? That's right, Drew! That means sine theta equals zero and cosine theta equals one. That means all the terms multiplied by sine theta will cancel out and equal zero. And all the terms multiplied by cosine theta will just be multiplied by one. What about the thrust? Does it vary? No, it doesn't. That means the term d tau over d w will cancel out and equal zero. Boy, us perturbations love those cancellations. They sure make life a lot easier. Now we're left with this. Interesting. But what is that d theta over dw, Drew? Well, Daniel, d theta dw is the change in flight path angle with respect to the change in normal velocity, which is also equal to cosine theta over v. But cosine theta, which is equal to 1, so cosine theta over v becomes 1 over v. Well, gee, thanks, Drew. <laughs> okay, I get it. That first term is 1 over v times cl. Well, what about that second term? dcd over dw. Well, we can write dcd dw as dcd d theta times d theta dw. Do you kids remember what d theta dw is? That's right, it's 1 over v. Now taking that and remembering that alpha is equal to theta, we can rewrite that as 1 over v times dcd d alpha. So bringing it back all in together, we have this equation. But you know us perturbations, we love simplifications. So we can take out this V and we get
get this. But wait, there's still one more step. It's time for the Dimensionless Dance. Which leaves us with our original equation. 